ingrained in American youth is the zest and aptitude for rugged athletics. On the playing fields, in gymnasiums, in teamwork and individual exploits have been developed attributes of body and mind. Skills and techniques which have made Americans outstanding in man-to-man -man competition. Long trained and inspired to excel in all the bills, sports and games, we've always played to win without pulling any punches but always in strict accordance of the rules of sportsmanship and gentlemanly conduct. Today, as we face enemies who recognize no fair play, the technique of man-to-man -man competition must be drastically revised to fit the tactics of war. Suspended for the duration is the code of sportsmanship. Now there is only one rule, to win. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is not a sport. It is designed for the emergency when your life may depend upon the ability to outwit or overcome an armed enemy, perhaps with only your two hands. These tactics of defense and counterattack combine the essential elements of jiu-jitsu, savat, American wrestling, and plain rough-and-tumble fighting. So first, let us examine some of the basic fundamentals. The basic body stance is one of easy balance, deceptively relaxed, yet actually always ready for quick counterattack. Arms are held lightly across the chest or spread with hands on hips. From either position, they are shifted instantly to meet an assailant's lead. Feet are slightly spread and firmly balanced. They must never be crossed, but always ready to shift or pivot according to the character of the maneuver. Blows are delivered with the knife edge of the hand to the points of greatest vulnerability. These primary vital points include the side of the neck midway between chin and ear, just under the jawbone, the larynx, or so-called Adam's apple, the bridge of the nose, the upper lip just at the juncture with the nose, the back of the neck at juncture of skull and spine, the kidneys at the lower edge of the ribs. The solar plexus, which may be attacked either with the edge of the hand or with the point of the hand in a straight jab. This straight jab is well adapted to a blow at the Adam's apple or in a direct attack to the eyes. One of the most vulnerable of all vital points is the groin, where even a light blow is capable of complete incapacitation. Attack strategy utilizes the feet to stamp on an opponent's arch, to deliver a sharp blow to the shin or to the groin. The knee is also a weapon of counterattack, striking into the groin, into the face of an opponent when bent over, or into the solar plexus. Basic hand holes and leverages are designed to take greatest advantage of leverage on joints and bones. This is the wrist lock, holding the opponent's wrist in both hands. The thumbs exert pressure on the back of the hand forcing the wrist joint backward and outward at the same instant. Another primary hold is the reversed wrist lock. The opponent's hand is twisted inward. As the elbow rises, additional leverage is applied at the elbow. Any resistance on the part of the opponent only increases the pain and the effectiveness of the hold. Twisting the hand inward imposes terrific leverage on the wrist. Pressure against wrist locks the elbow. A hammer lock with the addition of downward pressure for forcing the wrist joint. In this basic headlock, one arm is passed around the opponent's neck and locked over the other arm, while one hand is utilized to control the opponent's head. Any attempt to escape only tightens the hold. Simple strategy in forcing the back is the application of leverage. With one hand holding the belt and the other applying pressure at the throat, or with one arm around the waist, exerting leverage at the chin. 
Crossing the knee is an elementary hold which recurs in different adaptions in a wide variety of maneuvers. Breaking grips, hand holds. Simple hand holds obtained by an opponent are most easily broken, regardless of his physical strength, by forcing against his thumbs, either inward or outward. Slow motion photography clearly illustrates how forcing upward against the thumbs of an opponent nullifies even superior physical strength and breaks the grip. Breaking rear stranglehold with body twist. When a stranglehold is applied, it is possible to escape by means of sudden body twist with lowered head. In slow motion, it will be observed that hunching the shoulders and twisting breaks the hold while the hands are held in a position of defense against kicks or knee blows. Breaking the rear strangle holes with thumb lock. When a rear strangle hold is applied at arm's length, the breaking hold may be applied to the thumbs. With this leverage, the assailant's grip is most easily broken, and because of its acute twisting force locking the elbow, his power of resistance is minimized. His face is brought down into effective range of a knee lift. Now in slow motion review, lock the thumbs, twist body, knee lift to face. Breaking rear strangle with flying mare. When a strangle hold is applied from the rear, don't attempt instantly to break the hold, but insert hands over arms to get a breath and loosen the strangle. Strike him sharply in the groin with the open hand or fist. As his reaction throws him out of position, drop to the knee corresponding to the side of his approach and throw him over the shoulder with a flying mare. As he lands, the natural position of his arms and body makes it easy to apply an elbow lock. This advantage may be followed up by a vigorous attack to any part of the body. Now in slow motion, gaining a full breath, a blow to the groin, dropping to one knee, the flying mare, the elbow lock. Breaking the rear body lock with leg lift. When your hands are resting on hips, the natural inclination of an assailant is to clamp his hold inside your arms. Before he can complete his hold, lean over and seize his nearest ankle, drawing his leg up between your own. Having thus gained the initiative, follow it up by throwing him and landing with your full weight on his chest or abdomen. Now in slow motion review, seize ankle, pull up, drop on chest or abdomen. Breaking rear body lock with standing switch. In this counter, the first move is to secure your assailant's arm with your hand, then locking your left foot behind and inside his, Clinch your position by getting a grip on his leg or groin with your left hand, then fall backward. With your assailant on the deck, you can choose between breaking his arm or continuing the attack to back of neck while he is immobilized by a leg spread clamp on his feet and legs. Now in slow motion review, secure the arm, note positioning of foot and leg, hand in crotch, complete switch, spread legs. Breaking rear body lock with hip lock. As the assailant clamps on his body lock, turn into him, seize his arm just above the elbow, 
and bring your other hand around and up to a point just below his shoulder. Stepping across in front and leaning outward, you are in a position to apply a hip lock, landing with your full weight on his chest or abdomen and with both his arms still securely pinioned for further counterattack. Now in slow motion, seize upper arm with both hands. Apply hip lock. Breaking front strangle with arm wedge. Clasp the hands firmly. Note, however, that the fingers are not intertwined. Lunge upward, striking with full power of shoulders and arms, breaking grip of assailant, and in the same continuous motion, bring down clasped hands on the bridge of his nose or other vulnerable points of the face. In slow motion photography, observe the progressive details of the complete maneuver. Clasp hands firmly, lunge upward, strike blow to nose. Breaking front body lock with knee lift or foot kicks. First objective in the front body lock counter is to force the assailant's body far enough away to maneuver. Then he may be thrown off balance by stamping on his arch, a shot kick to the shin, a blow to the groin with a knee, or a combination of all. The fallen man should be approached from the rear, out of range of his feet, and to a position to continue the counterattack. Now, in slow motion review, Force body away, stamp on arch, kick to shin, blow to groin, or combination of all, approach from rear to continue counterattack. Breaking front body lock with hip lock. In body lock counter, the assailant's arm is seized and clamped at the elbow. Your other arm is passed under and around his opposite arm at the chest. With both his arms secured, and by extending the hip and bending to the side, you are set to throw him with a hip lock, landing with your full weight on his ribs and abdomen, and in position to continue any counterattack. Now in slow motion, seize arm at elbow, extend hip to side, apply hip lock. Backward flip with foot to stomach. As your assailant attacks you, reach over his arms and grasp clothing firmly. Place foot in his stomach as he continues his forward motion. Fall back, kicking assailant overhead, where he drops to deck on his back. You can retain clothing grip for a stranglehold and control him for further attack. Now, again in slow motion. Grasp clothing, place foot in stomach, fall backward, kick assailant overhead, Retain hold. Conclude attack. Chancery against low frontal attack. As your adversary comes to you, ward him off with a stiff arm to head and throw one arm under his shoulder. Place other arm across side of face and lock his hand on the inside of your opposite elbow. Pressure upward will break the neck. A knee lift to the solar plexus can be used with a throw to the deck for further counterattack. 
Now again in slow motion review. Quick stiff arm. Apply chancery. Knee lift to shoulder plexus. Throw opponent. Arm drag. As your opponent rushes you, reach straight over and grasp your opponent's wrist. And at the same time, secure the upper arm on the underside with your other hand. Simultaneously, throw foot across opponent's instep or shin. Now fall back, pulling him over your leg to trip. Carry out further attack from rear. Now in slow motion. Secure arm. Throw leg across. Fall back. Trip. Conclude attack. The leg pick up. As your opponent rushes you, knock his arms out to side, step in with one knee to deck, grasp him firmly just above the knees. With your shoulder in his stomach, raise him off the deck, place one hand in back, keeping the other hand around his legs, and drop him to the deck on his head or neck. Conclude with knee drop, kick in ribs, or any other attack. In full motion, knock hands to side, secure legs, raise off deck, switch hand to back, drop to deck on head or neck, knee drop to ribs, conclude attack. The hip lock. Draw the arms of your opponent under your own. Lock his right arm with a grapevine, which places your hand between his chest and yours. Grasp his left elbow with your right hand. Cross your left leg in front of him. Bend, and using the hip as a fulcrum, heave him over. Let's see it again in slow motion. Draw opponent to you, lock the arms, step through, pull over. The reverse hip lock. In this maneuver, the right arm slips under the left shoulder, and the left arm secures the elbow of your opponent. You step across him with the right foot, use the right hip as the fulcrum, and throw him over it. Again in slow motion. Secure the arms. Step behind. Here again, foot action is important. Throw over hip. The offensive wrist lock. The wrist lock is a highly versatile offensive tactic. Here it develops from an attempted one-hand strangle. The hold is broken by turning the assailant's hand and forcing forward. Then the wrist lock is applied. Fingers over wrist and thumbs forcing hand back. The assailant must follow the lead of the hand or suffer a broken wrist. So, with this lead, he is easily thrown and subject to various forms of counterattack, breaking the wrist or elbow, a kick to the ribs, the shoulder plexus, or the groin, and is held in a helpless position without use of the hand. Now, again in slow motion review. Peel off grasping hand, apply wrist lock, pull opponent to deck, Break elbow or wrist. 
continue with foot attack to other vulnerable points. The reverse wrist lock. When an assailant seizes your clothing or pushes, he is completely vulnerable to counterattack. Reach over and grip the little finger of your opponent's hand. Place other hand on his elbow for added leverage and roll the arm. As his head is forced down, clamp your elbow over his shoulder. Any resistance on his part can result only in broken bones or forced joints. You can use your foot or knee in his face if necessary. Now again in slow motion. Reach over, grasp little finger edge of opponent's hand, step in and apply pressure outward and down. Double wrist lock. Here a leg tackle is applied. Seize his wrist, straight over with your hand, Slide your other hand over his arm above the elbow and clasp your own wrist, thereby completing a double wrist lock. From this position, a natural development is a twisting hammer lock up the back with a throw backwards. Now again in slow motion. Apply double wrist lock. Up back in twisting hammer lock. Throw over with a kick. Standing defense against kicks from front with leg lift and trip. In defending against kicks from the front, hold your position until the assailant starts delivery. Then quickly turn and clamp the leg. One hand over the calf, the other hand under the heel. In this position, assailant is completely off balance and helpless. Follow through by kicking assailant's standing leg from under him, at the same time hoisting his kicking leg. The resultant fall will stop the ordinary opponent. But in any case, you are in position to conclude your counterattack with a hands or knee. Quick turn, clamp leg and grasp under heel, kick standing leg and hoist kicking leg. Continue attack with hands and knees. Kneeling defense against kicks from side. From prone position, time the approach of your assailant so that when he starts to deliver the kick, raise to your hands and knees and fall sharply in on his upright leg and clamp it with your arm. The momentum of his approach thus helps to throw him off balance. Throwing his leg under you throws him to the deck. By use of a toe hold, turn him over, slip one leg behind his knee, and clamp it with a bar toe hold. In this position, little pressure is necessary to break the leg or ankle or dislocate the knee. And you can use either one or both hands to conclude the attack, as your body pressure against the foot is sufficient to hold opponent down. Now, in slow motion review, raise to hands and knees, Fall sharply against the knee, pull leg up and under, twisting toe hold, bar toe hold to break the leg or ankle, prone defense against kicks, the knee lock. As assailant advances, determine which leg will deliver the kick and start to apply knee lock to stationary leg. Hook one foot behind his heel. Strike sharply with other foot at his knee. Usually the power of his momentum will force the knee joint. Otherwise, throw him by carrying through. When advancing to conclude the attack, use the knees to prevent him from rolling over and grabbing you. 
Hook one foot behind heel. Strike sharply at me with other foot. Prone defense against kick. Leg scissors from side. As the seventh advances, keep the upper leg cocked for action. And as he starts to deliver the kick, swing the leg around behind his knees, thereby locking his fence. Strike downward with the top leg and upward with the under leg in a scissors motion so that his own momentum will throw him. From this position, roll up on the assailant, holding his leg locked in your own. Application of pressure will break the leg or dislocate the knee. In any case, the assailant is completely at your disposal. Now in slow motion review, throw upper leg into position. Carry through maneuver to bar toe hold. Apply pressure. Defense against club. In defense against the club, cross the arms and step in to meet the blow. This cross defense affords the greatest certainty of meeting and arresting assailant's arm. Now watch the foot action. Turn body, grasping his arm at the forearm and shoulder, and follow through with a flying mare. On the deck, go into an elbow lock, breaking the arm at the elbow, or lead into various methods of concluding the counterattack with a knees, feet, or hands. In slow motion review, cross arms, step into blow, flying mare, Conclude attack. Defense against knife, downward thrust. The first objective is to block the knife's blow by seizing the assailant's wrist with the outstretched hand, thumb downward. Then cross the other hand under and around his arm in a reverse double wrist lock. Using your shoulder as a fulcrum, apply leverage until he drops the knife or his arm is broken. Force him to the deck and conclude the counterattack. Now in review, lock arm, apply double reverse wrist lock. Throw to deck, continue counterattack. Upward thrust with knife. Encountering the upward thrust, both hands form a V and are used to seize the wrist and arrest the blow. While forcing the wrist back, throw the assailant off balance by a sharp knee lift to the groin. Swing under his arm and apply a hammer lock. To force release of the knife, Apply pressure downward against the wrist, then maintain the hold for control in leading or break wrist. Now again slow motion. Block thrust with V, knee lift to groin, turn out and apply twisting hammerlock, wrist down. Side thrust with knife. To block this maneuver, both hands are used in a V to seize the assailant's wrist. Then the right hand is slipped around the assailant's arm to gain a double wrist lock. Stepping back, this hole develops into a twisting hammer lock, exerting leverage which will tear the opponent's shoulder if he resists. When the knife grip is broken, the hammer lock can be retained with one hand while using the other to recover the knife and finish the counterattack. Now in slow motion review, block maneuver, 
Apply double wrist lock. Throw using proper leg action and liquidate. Club defense against knife. If armed with a stout stick, wait for the thrust to expose the assailant's arm, then strike it forearm. One blow should paralyze or break the arm. If not, jab sharply to the solar plexus and continue the counterattack with both stick and knife. Among handholds suitable for controlling prisoners without the use of weapons is the elbow lock with half Nelson. Grasp the inside of the wrist with your hand, slipping your free hand under his arm, across the shoulder, and anchoring your hold on the neck. Resistance is countered by application of pressure to the elbow. A variation of this arm lead is obtained with the anchor hand grasping the prisoner's clothing across the chest. Another effective arm lead is obtained by grasping the fingers, elevating the elbow, and bending the fingers against the joint. An effective and inconspicuous lead is obtained by placing one hand on the elbow to keep it from bending, while the other hand secures two smaller fingers and the thumb exerts pressure on the back of the hand. A simple one-hand lead control is this, with a bent wrist and elbow locked within your arm and hand. There is little likelihood of any attempt to make use of his free hand. Any resistance results in agonizing pressure against the bent wrist. A primary objective in preparing prisoners for search is to arrange them so that they are incapable of counterattack. Line them against a wall with feet extended backward at such an angle that only by keeping both hands firmly against the wall can they maintain position. After completing the search of one man, step back and order the second man into the outside position. Thus you keep all prisoners in your range of vision and you are never exposed to simultaneous attack from two sides. When searching a man, always keep one foot inside his and your weapon on side away from him. At the first sign of resistance, jerking your foot will throw him. Another effective position for search is that in which the prisoner kneels with both hands drawn up behind his back. This position not only prevents any sudden resistance, but it is so awkward that any attempt to gain balance is readily apparent. In approaching a prone enemy, Always assume that his helplessness is a pretense. Failure to observe this precaution may result in this. For your self-protection, first clamp his leg in a bar toehold. In this position, you can counter any resistance and search him thoroughly for concealed weapons. Clamp one of his ankles in the back of your other knee and apply pressure with your body and search for concealed weapons. Disarming assailant with bayoneted rifle, frontal approach. First, move in to deflect bayonet with a quick inside blow. Then, seize the rifle with one hand under barrel and other hand at breech. Twist the rifle overhand. Then, as assailant resists, reverse the twist. Rest the rifle from his hand. Now, in slow motion, deflect rifle and bayonet. Secure weapon. Twist from grasp. The backstroke may be directed either at the assailant's body, if he is still in a position to resist, 
or merely to return rifle to normal position for use. Disarming assailant with rifle, rear approach. Encounter against the rifle or bayonet at the back. The first downward sweep knocks the barrel out of line of fire or thrust. The hands are then shifted to the breech and barrel, and the rifle twisted to the left. In a quick reverse twist, step across in front of assailant, throwing him off balance and crossing his arms to break his grip. Let's go back and watch the leg action in this maneuver. Now the complete maneuver in slow motion review. Turn and block. Secure weapon. Twist out. Counter if you wish. Disarming assailant with gun and shoulder holster. As the assailant starts to reach for the shoulder holster, knock his elbow upward and outward with a hand. This does not prevent the draw, but throws him off balance and positions his arm for you to slip your arm through and under to apply a reverse wrist lock. Pulling down and swinging backward with twisting pressure on the wrist forces the elbow and shoulder joint and keeps the gun constantly pointed away from you. Inward pressure on the wrist breaks the gun hold and makes disarming easy. By maintaining the wrist lock, the assailant is in a position to be disposed of by a blow from the captured weapon or to be taken prisoner. Now in slow motion, knock elbow upward and out. Apply reverse wrist lock. Note gun is pointed away from you. Break gun hold. Disarm. Disarming assailant with gun and side holster. When the assailant attempts to draw from a side holster, the initial defense move is to block the movement by seizing his gun arm at the bend in the elbow. Step to the side of assailant and slightly to the rear, then forcing his arm up and over into a twisting hammerlock your other hand applies additional force, propelling the shoulder downward. The assailant's gun arm becomes locked by your elbow and body, and your right hand is free to twist the gun from his grip. Repeating in slow motion, seize gun arm. Apply hammer lock. Disarm. Disarming an assailant with pistol in back, outside turn. Although preparing to counter, give your assailant the impression of surrender by raising the arms, but turning head enough to observe which hand holds the gun. Strike with the corresponding arm, deflecting the gun and turning from line of fire and following through to develop a bar hammerlock from which the assailant can neither escape nor fire at you. Reaching over immediately, twist the gun free, then step back out of reach. In slow motion, give impression of surrender. Turn and deflect gun. Lock arm, twist weapon from grasp. Disarming an assailant with pistol in back using inside turn.
An effective defense against the gun in the back is the inside turn. By turning into your assailant, you again turn out of the line of fire and clamp the gun hand under your arm with an elbow lock. From this position, attack with hand to face and knee to groin, forcing assailant back and causing him to lose his grip on the gun. Now in slow motion, Turn in, clamp gun arm, frontal attack, retrieve firearm, and liquidate. Disarming assailant with pistol aimed at head. In this surprise counterattack, it is important not to betray your intentions. Notice that the eyes are steady ahead, even though the counter has already started. The upward throw of the arm breaks the gun grip and places you in position to deliver a paralyzing kick to the groin. No further attack is necessary. Now, again in slow motion, bring arm up quickly, kick to groin. Disarming assailant with automatic. In this maneuver, speed and surprise are paramount. Keep arms raised and eyes level until instant of action. If weapon is a sliding barrel type automatic pistol, strike barrel with palm of hand, forcing back the slide and rendering the pistol inoperative. In the case of an uncocked revolver, holding the cylinder prevents discharge. Seizing the wrist with the left hand, force the gun barrel backward, twisting against the thumb. Continuing the twist increases pressure on the trigger finger until the assailant is subdued or the finger is broken. Now in slow motion review, force back slide on automatic, seize wrist, Twist over trigger finger, pull down. Disarming opponent with pistol pointed at abdomen using outward twist. At such close range, the assailant's gun is highly vulnerable to counterattack. With a quick right hand jab, Deflect the barrel, turning your body at the same time so as to be out of line of fire. With the left hand, grasp the barrel and twist the gun, breaking finger. Then step back to be out of reach of his hands or feet. Now again in slow motion. Quick right hand jab. Grasp gun barrel. Twist gun from grasp. Cover assailant. Disarming opponent with pistol pointed at abdomen using inward twist. Again, the lead to the assailant's wrist and the turnaway are simultaneous, so that you are quickly out of the line of fire. In disarming, retain your hold on his wrist while forcing the gun barrel with the other hand. Thus, any accidental discharge of the gun endangers only your assailant. To conclude the maneuver, Throw assailant off balance by means of a hand grip and step back to cover him. Repeating in slow motion, quick left hand jab, grasp gun barrel, twist gun from grasp, cover assailant. Disarming assailant with pistol using downward twist. The rapidity with which the downward twist is executed makes it impossible for your assailant to pull the trigger of his weapon. With one hand, grasp the pistol and push down, striking up under the wrist with the other. 
This scissors action prevents the assailant from retaining his grip on the weapon. With gun in your possession, step back immediately. In slow motion, scissor action of hands, step back. Disarming assailant with pistol using sideward twist. In this quick maneuver, one hand strikes the inside of the assailant's wrist, while the other hand strikes the pistol out of his grasp by forcing against the thumb. Don't scramble with the assailant to pick up the pistol. As he leans over, bring your knee up into his face, knocking him away. Then retrieve the gun and conclude the counterattack. In slow motion, strike wrist and pistol. Knee lift to face. Retrieve weapon. In this analysis of hand-to-hand -hand combat tactics, basic maneuvers were illustrated as applied to certain specific combat situations. Obviously, however, there can be no predetermined procedures to fit all circumstances. You must master the basic techniques so thoroughly as to be able to improvise defense counterattack as required. And such flexibility of adaptation means practice, practice, and more practice.